Greetings all, and welcome to Wait What? My name's Stephanie, and today we're talking about water weight. Water weight, or water retention, is just another way for the bathroom scale to lie to you. I mean, we've all heard of water weight, but really, what is it? What causes it, and how does it actually affect the body? The human body is made up of about 50 to 65 percent water, and that percentage can vary. And it's only natural, then, for the weight from that water to vary, too. When you eat or drink something, the water in it gets spread out throughout your entire body. Your cells use it if they need to maintain balance or functionality, it gets sent through your bloodstream, your organs use it to flush out toxins, and the body itself even uses it to help maintain temperature. Throughout the day, your water weight can vary 5 to even 10 pounds for some people. And that's why if you measured yourself on a scale more than once a day, you'd see this really major fluctuation. Which, by the way, I don't recommend weighing yourself more than once a day. Your body varies way too much for you to get any consistent benefit from knowing how much it's going up and down after a couple hours, after a meal, or after a nap. The reason it's so important to be aware of water weight is just because of how much it impacts your bathroom scale. And if you're weighing yourself every day and suddenly you spike up three pounds, you need to know what's causing that and why. Let's look at an example. Say you had a cheat day. Not a cheat day, you should only have cheat meals, but let's say you had a cheat day and you had Frosted Flakes in the morning with whole milk. Let's say for lunch you had grilled cheese and you had a brownie and you had this giant bowl of pasta and then you had ice cream and Oreos, maybe an alcoholic beverage. And the next day you get on the scale and you have gained three pounds. Your first thought is panic. Oh my God, I've undone all of this work. But the truth is those three pounds aren't fat, they're water. Think of it, the human body cannot build three pounds of muscle or fat overnight. It just, it can't. From a dietary perspective, for a human to gain an extra pound, they would have to eat more than 3,500 calories on top of their already daily intake. To lose a pound, you'd have to do a deficit of 3,500 calories. And think about it, look back over those three pounds you gained. Did you really eat almost 10,000 calories yesterday? No, you didn't. So there's how, why is there three pounds on the scale? Well, those three pounds are water weight. If you'd like to learn more about the effects of having a cheat meal on your body when you're trying to cut calories or how water weight plays into it, there was an experiment done in World War II called the Minnesota Starvation Experiment. Look that up if you want to see more about what scientists learn when the body has an extreme lack of calories and then is suddenly given a meal and how the water weight fluctuates from it. But getting back to what we were talking about with water weight. What is water weight and what causes it? In terms of weight loss, when we talk about water weight, we're usually talking about glycogen. Now what is glycogen? It's basically a storage of glucose or sugar that your body keeps in case of emergencies. It's also the very first thing your body goes to when you start dieting. If I may get my smart glasses on. According to the Mayo Clinic, when you reduce your calorie intake, your body gets its needed energy by releasing and utilizing its stored up glycogen which is a type of carbohydrate found in the muscles and the liver. Glycogen holds on to water, so when glycogen is used and burned up for energy, it also releases the water it's holding on to. Glycogen is the real reason it's so easy to lose weight up front, and that's why these companies can promise five or 10 pounds in the first week, because depleting your glycogen storage also depletes excess water, and you can shed a ton of it. Glycogen really knows how to hold on to water. For every one gram of it, it can hold up to four grams of water. According to the Guyton and Hall textbook of medical physiology, the liver alone can hold 120 grams of glycogen. To put that into perspective, one pound equals roughly 453 grams. For those of you at home doing math, that's 480 grams of water. That means there's more than a pound of water in your liver alone you can easily burn through. For dieting and exercise, a typical person will burn through their glycogen storage in about two days, give or take. So you know what? This is pretty good, right? You got all this easily accessible weight, easy to get rid of. Your body wouldn't miss it much, right? Right? Oh, uh, wrong. See, remember, glycogen is a built-up emergency supply of energy, and your body doesn't like to go without it. So the second that you eat anything with sugar or carbs in it, all of those reserves get refilled. And with all of the glycogen coming back, so does the water. And thus your body goes through this kind of balancing act where it's up a couple pounds, down a couple pounds, depending on what time of the day it is, when was the last time you've eaten, and what sort of food you've eaten. 
But being people, we don't like seeing that big variety. So what can we do to make our water weight a little more consistent throughout the day so that we aren't getting these massive spikes of four pounds after a cheat day and we're not just bottoming ourselves out and never restoring our glycogen levels? Well, for starters, don't starve yourself. This whole thing of trying to figure out, am I getting enough carbs? Am I eating too much carbs? Should I add more protein? It's really not important for the average person. I mean, if you're a bodybuilder or a marathon runner or an athlete, yeah, you have to be more particular with balancing carb, protein, fats. But for the average person, just have a well-balanced, healthy diet. Second, don't overdo the exercise. Again, with, with dieting, you're so worried about these extremes that you completely cut all of your glycogen levels out, and then they all come rushing back in. The same thing can happen on the physical side. If you work out too hard, you'll deplete all of those and then they'll all fill back up after you eat. So really, it's a whole don't go to the extremes, okay? Don't do extreme diets, don't do extreme workouts. Find a good moderate middle road and that way everything stays balanced and you get a gradual decrease in your weight if that's what you're going for. By being moderate and finding a good middle ground, your glycogen levels will naturally start to lower along with your weight and your inches and whatever you're trying to achieve through your workouts. And finally, just relax. We get ourselves so stressed out about the little details. Am I doing enough? Am I doing it right? Um, do I need to worry about this cheat meal? Uh, I got this big thing at work, there's school, there's all of this pressure. And your body gets weighed down under it. So the best thing you can do is just relax. Exhale, meditate, watch a movie, whatever you need to do to unwind. By doing that, your body is going to respond a lot better and you'll find that your water retention goes down. Don't worry about the diet, don't stress out about exercise, and just don't stress overall. By doing those things, you'll help cut back on the water retention. And speaking about the diet, if you are looking for little tricks to kind of help keep your water weight down, there are two main things you have to pay attention to. Sodium and potassium. Sodium is basically, you know, common table salt or it's a common preservative found in canned goods. When there's too much salt in the body, there has to be more water to balance out that salt. Potassium has the opposite effect. The higher the potassium, the lower the water retention. Food with potassium in it are things like beans, avocados, potatoes, and of course the infamous banana. There is more to water weight and I did kind of oversimplify a few things and we didn't even talk about the effects of hormones on your water weight. But I hope this introductory to it kind of gives you the idea of what's happening and why your scale fluctuates the way it does sometimes. So moving on to this week's measurements. For my chest, I measured 42.5 inches. For my waist, 40 inches. For my hip, 49.5 inches. And I weigh 208.5 pounds. Thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed the video, please give me a like or leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Bye!